Now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, did fail her. Yeah, it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. And uh, had we but the world enough and time, then coin us, Kevin, would be no crime. We have but half an hour to use, so let's not mince the words we choose. Wow. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Where's that from? That's uh, to his coin mistress by Andrew Marvell, because it's National Poetry Day. Oh, wow. Oh, excellent. Well, that's not actually to his coy mistress. The poem doesn't go like that. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have the words Kevin in it, and it's actually about trying to get someone into bed. Yeah, but, I, you know, well, I, I hope so Andrew Marvell doesn't sue us uh, for copyright. Oh, is he around anymore? Maybe not. Not for a while. Lovely poem, lovely poem. I didn't realise it was International Poetry Day. I'm a poet, but I don't know it. Uh, let's uh, get through the headlines. 30 minutes uh, of fast news to come. First of all, uh, you know, uh, you always uh, take the mickey out of me because I've become a sort of six o'clock BBC news viewer. Oh, and when I'm at home, I was at home yesterday. And, <laughs> I, and uh, who should uh, lead the charge on the 6pm uh, bulletin on the state broadcaster? It's Rishi Sunak sitting there smiling away saying uh, the economy has turned a corner <laughs> and 2024 will be the year of the bounce back. Oh, uh, excellent. And he's talking, of course, about the fact that inflation is kind of impressively down. Uh, we're going to get an interest <laughs> rate uh, stasis, I think, today from the Bank of England. They won't put it up or down. Oh, my gosh, the interest rate's not moving at all. Yeah, so this, this is so exciting. This is, <laughs> this is bounce back Britain. But the this point is, the point is, that uh, you know, on the face of it, he, he's got something to crow about here. It's not the government that has achieved this. This <laughs> is international economics yeah, exactly. uh, uh, that are favouring the conditions for uh, a it? fairly good thing. But but the point is, the people are still saying. Uh, petrol's costing me a fortune. My uh, utility bills are through the right. roof. Prices are still high. The point is, is inflation may be down, but we are still spending a hell of a lot yeah. on everything. What people tend to forget, so first of all, this corner, right, do you need some sort of giant, really <laughs> precise, infinitesimally degreed protractor to be able to identify an ever so slight like, this yeah, corner like that corner we're like that. <laughs> um, but, but also, you know, what people forget about inflation is, oh, great, yeah, things are not getting really, really expensive expensive anymore. It doesn't mean they start going backwards, right? The level you get to is where you are, and then it just doesn't go up as quickly. So everything does cost a lot more than it did two years ago, because we had all that massive inflation. It's not like suddenly, oh, wow, prices have dropped by half. You know, buy one, get one free on everything. Woo, everything's so cheap. You can it's afford not, to go on 15 holidays. Point. People are hurting financially, and that's uh, Rishi's problem. But uh, here comes my famous Sunak impression. This is what he said on the BB last night. Hi, guys. I, I do believe that at the start of this year, we have turned a corner after the shocks of the past few years. And we are... Hi, guys. We are in a new economic moment, and 2024 will prove to be the year the economy bounces back. Well, good luck with that. Good <laughs> yeah, luck good with, luck with that. that. And also, uh, FYI, Mr Sunak, I'll tell you what isn't bouncing back, and that's your poll ratings, because if you have a look at the current this user is amazing. poll this, is amazing. this morning, this is amazing, right? So you've now got a situation where the Conservative Party are polling at 19%, and Reform UK have gone up to 15%, just four percentage That's points amazing. between them. Given that reform are taking support from the Conservative Party, this means there's now only a 2% increase in support for reform, and all of a sudden, neck and neck. Have we ever seen that before in the history of British politics? No, we have not. Yeah. It is fun, it is exciting, there is choice out there in politics, and I'm here for it. She's very excited, isn't she? Yeah, uh, you can tell that. Uh, but seriously, there is a... Uh, I've always said, you know, to, to, to you and... 
other people associated with Royal Reform UK, inc including the leader, Richard Tice. I've always said, I said, it's, it's easy what you guys are doing. You are offering Conservative voters <laughs> Conservative policies. The trouble with the Conservative Party is it is not offering Conservative voters Conservative policies. Mm -hmm. It's offering them some sort of Lib Dem, Labour, light mishmash nonsense that uh, uh, Tories don't want to vote for. I don't understand yeah. why Sunak can't see this. What's he doing stopping people smoking and things like that? You're supposed to be a Conservative. You're supposed to believe in personal <laughs> freedom. You're supposed to keep taxes low, you're supposed to seal our borders, and so on and so forth, law and order. Everything the Tories are supposed to stand for, uh, I'm afraid that Mr Sunak and his gang have abrogated, and uh, that's, why, that's why Reform UK are on the rise, because they're just offering traditional Tory uh, 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 policies. But uh, still, and still, the junior oh, doctors yeah, strike. They have voted by there. a 98% landslide oh, to continue God. their frontline medical worker strikes for six months to seven. September, so lots of patients will die. Yeah. Uh, they want a 35% pay rise. Ridiculous. They know they're never going to get it. This is the pompously named British Medical Association, yeah. which is actually just a two-bit left-wing union. By the way, this is interesting. 98% of our members voted for this. That's because they're privileged people mm -hmm. who just want a Labour government. They British want to... Murder Association. But, but, but like. the turnout for this vote was only 62%. Do you know what really disgusts me about mm -hmm. these junior doctors? They're supposed to be educated people, some of the most educated in society. They can see there's a cost of living crisis. They can see that everybody in the public sector and the private sector are also struggling, that wages have not been commensurate with inflation across all industries. Mm -hmm. They know this. They also know after COVID that there isn't any money left in the coffers. They see this. They know what the waiting lists are. These aren't idiots, or let's not hope they're idiots, considering they wield scalpels against abdomens. They know exactly what the current situation is. This is pure greed. And as for that lily-livered, limp loser Sunak, why doesn't he come out, get his little plinth out, put on his high-heeled shoes so he can see above it, and actually <laughs> say to the junior doctors, you know what the state of the economy is, not just in the UK, but the whole world after COVID. You know what the waiting lists are, not just in the UK, but most of the world because of COVID. You know what the economic climate is, and you know what you're demanding is not possible. So stop being murderous, selfish, egotistical little student protesters. Get back on the wards because the public have no truck with this anymore. That is what Sunak should say. And everyone would go like this. And then the junior doctors would say, putting the placards down and go, go. go well, back to the hospital. Again, another opportunity for me to say what she said. No. I totally agree. Uh, by the way, uh, th this isn't pure greed, the 35% pay rise. Did not. They're demanding 35% because they know it will never be met. This is political. They want to destabilise the Tory government so their beloved Labour mates can get into power. And, uh, you know and what? for that, and on the back of mates, that, people are dying. And Patients their, their beloved Labour mates are not going to give them the 35% either because guess what? The public yeah. don't have enough money. They'll drop, but when they, they can't afford that. No, but when Labour get in, they'll drop their demands, trust me. Uh, now, train drivers are oh, also yeah, uh, well. promising a wave of strikes across the nation in April, uh, including, of course, the London Underground. These are drivers uh, who are going to walk out because uh, they want more money, of course, in this long-running dispute. Uh, passengers, uh, commuters, uh, uh, the, these, this Aslef union, you know, Mick Lynch, uh, he's not Aslef, he's the other one, but, you know, all the Micks who run all these trains, oh. uh, they're all called Mick. Uh, they, uh, they say, oh, the overwhelming public support for no. our industrial no. action. No, there isn't, mate. No, there isn't. It, that support was vaguely there at the beginning. Uh, there is no support for these strikers now. And uh, there's utter, utter misery. Yeah. There's going to be misery. And you know what? Through you know what early happens? April will be utter misery. Whenever there are problems, people come up with solutions. When there are crises, it is the fertile ground for innovation. I'm pretty sure people out there are going, hmm, driverless trains. They have those on the DLR. Yeah. They have those in Lille in France. Maybe that's what we should be bringing in because train drivers aren't turning up for work. So, yeah. you know, be careful. You and reap by, what you sow. And by the way, if you support, do you support the fact that these poor train drivers, they're struggling by on £60,000 a year. I mean, they must also 
but surely they deserve about 80,000, right? Yes or no? Call us later on Crosstalk, 0344 499 1000. They do not deserve that. Uh, they don't. Now, uh, now, it is time now. We should have sort of music for this. It is time for though? our royal song. Well, you know, kind of majestic. <laughs> or something like that, you know, something regal and uh, majestic. Anyway, it is time for the D Daily Kate. Uh, three workers. Give us this day our Daily well, Kate. Well, yesterday, uh, it's a remarkable story broke that uh, somebody had tried to access uh, Kate's medical records while she was having abdominal surgery in the London Clinic, a very exclusive private hospital in the centre of the capital. Uh, today, uh, we learned, or late last night, we learned that three workers at the clinic have been suspended amid a pro probe into this uh, alleged crime. Uh, and uh, another story has emerged this morning, Alex, mm. to say that the hospital, the, the, the London Clinic, uh, may have, it is claimed, they may have uh, delayed reporting this for at least a week. Wow. Uh, now, they did tell the Information Commissioner's Office uh, in the end, uh, but uh, it should have been reported within 72 hours, and there are claims that they didn't report this uh, very serious yeah. well, uh, crime uh, for at least a week, and we're wondering why. It is a criminal offence, and, you know, as you were saying to me earlier, why on earth aren't the Met Police probing this? Because this is a serious breach of confidentiality. This is a serious intrusion onto personal data. And, you know, the London Clinic, that is a big private establishment used and beloved by people who really... Re request and require confidentiality because they tend to be big names in the public eye who can probably afford the big bucks that this clinic charges. Well, you know, it's a marketplace and these headlines will be going around the world and I don't think your Snoop Dogg, Beyonce's and uh, Kate's are going to be coming back anytime soon. I don't know if Snoop Dogg and Beyonce use the London Snoop Clinic, but, you know. <laughs> So they Snoop might want Dogg. to, and now they won't. I never thought Snoop Dogg would get into this show, but he's made it. <laughs> no, uh, he did. I should. I, should, I don't uh, think he's called Snoop Dogg anymore. I think he's like evolved into Snoop right. Lion. Uh, well, or they, something. they usually do keep changing their names, they do. don't they? Uh, we should say the London Clinic uh, said we have systems in place to monitor management of patient information, and in case of any breach, all appropriate investigatory, regulatory, and disciplinary steps will be taken. Uh, the Information Commissioner's Office uh, confirmed. They said we can confirm we have received a breach report and are assessing the information provided. Uh, uh, Kensington Palace, this is a matter for the London Clinic, and as I say, I go, don't understand, given all of yeah. that, why the police... Are, but, this is very serious. It doesn't matter that it... Oh, well, it does serious. matter it's as the very, police. very serious. But any, if anybody tries to steal anybody's, anybody's private is. personal medical information from a hospital, uh, that surely is a matter That's for really the police. Dark. What are they doing? But don't you worry, because uh, Rishi Sunak has stepped into the fray. Well, actually, he hasn't. He never does. A spokesman, a mysterious, faceless, nameless spokesman has said on behalf of the Prime Minister, get behind the Princess of Wales. Well, you know, now Wishy Sunak said it. I'm sure all the Kate spiracy theories are just going to stop. Yeah. I mean, I agree with him entirely. I think that it's been pretty repugnant the way that uh, people have been behaving on social media, digging around, speculation, conspiracy theories. That's not her affairs. That's a body double. You know, just, it, it's madness. You know, I mean, get off social media, go have a cup of tea, become a normal it, human again. But it does indicate what an extraordinary, uh, unprecedented situation mm, this is, huge. that Downing Street issues a statement saying, get behind the princess, uh, which I agree with, by the way. Mm. Uh, and uh, still, this story rumbles on. Uh, there'll be much more to come. Uh, but, the, you know, this conspiracy theory thing, Alex, the thing is... People just enjoy conspiracy they theories. Do. They want to get involved. They love talking about uh, these mysteries that they basically confirm. Where is Kate? Well, on Saturday, she was at the Windsor Farm Shop. Where is she? Well, last week, she was in a car with her mother. Where the hell? That's Why haven't we seen her. Kate? We did. She's in a car with William. And yet, well, no matter how many times we see her, uh, yeah. The uh, conspiracy theories get worse and worse See, and worse. Social media because mangles your mind. It hasn't really got anything to do with her. It is that people love conspiracy theories. They do love theory. a conspiracy theory. Right. No, no, but anyway, but everybody, we really should stop. Give her a break. You know, she's That's a human it. being. She's a smart woman. She understands that the royals will always be at the centre of a goldfish bowl. But yeah. this is really a bit over the top. It let's uh, let's give her a break, eh? Let's give her uh, a break. God, I'm, uh, cha you know I'm what, changing, I, aren't I? Do you know what else I want to be given a break from? And this is the blimmin' Rwanda bill, because 
because there it is, ping pong, back ping and pong, forth. Ping. The Lords demand seven more amendments. So it's been in the Commons, then the Lords, and they said we want these amendments. It went back to the Commons, they went, no, we're not doing that. And then it's gone back to the Lords, and they went, no, we need these amendments. And it's gone back to the Commons, and basically <laughs> it's just like this, like a metronome, like a polar bear in a zoo pacing around, losing its marbles. So they've, um, reje they've rejected seven more uh, kind of amendments to... Rishi's Rwanda bill. They want uh, seven more changes. They had their ten changes they wanted last week were summarily all rejected by the Commons. It's gone back upstairs. They said, well, here's seven changes we want. The Commons will uh, reject them. Then it will go back on Monday the 25th of uh, uh, of uh, March and uh, on Tuesday the 26th it will go back down to the Commons and at that point this ludicrous game will probably end but here is uh, in the House of Lords uh, James Coker a former uh, Labour Minister uh, having a go at the uh, Tories particularly James Cleverly the Home yes. Secretary who said I mean... that Labour Lords were deliberately delaying the bill are. But, they are. but Coker's it, they are I think but Coker's got a reasonable point here take it away the serious point I'm making is the question the, need, the government needs to answer. If it's accusing this chamber of delaying the bill, why is it not back in the other place on Monday the 25th and on back here on Tuesday the 26th, where it could be dealt with again? Where is the answer to that? And we're now told it's coming back after Easter. That's not our fault it's coming back after Easter. It's the government's own management of its own timetable. And I say again, it needs to sort it out. Do you know, the problem with all of this is just constant breadcrumbing and political gaslighting. Of course, Labour are deliberately frustrating this. Of as, course, as are they're the deliberately uh, adding amendments and trying to sort of create yeah, a yeah, bigger headache for the Conservative Party as possible, because to them, it's all politics. Let, oh, forget about the fact that we've got 3,000 odd people breaking into the country. Who knows among them? Hardened criminals, people dying, terrorists, people drowning in the channel. rapists, then also got lots of innocent people mm. dying, people smugglers connected to terrorist organisations, having a field day, making loads of money. No! Don't don't worry about all the real issues. Don't worry about actually sorting this problem. Let's just use it to really hurt the other party. Pathetic. And in the end, this ping pong, up to the Lords, we need 10 changes. Back to the Commons, you can't have them. Up to the Lords again. OK, seven changes. Back to the Commons, you can't have them. Uh, we'll come back on Easter. We'll do the whole process again. Uh, it, it is a purely a ludicrous Westminster debating mm -hmm. society nonsense where there's a real crisis going on. Okay. And, it, and the joke about it is in the end the commons will turn around and say well thanks for your input to me ladies and me lords but and me barons any of your but you can just do one yeah. we're ignoring you that's what will happen at the end it's... after this ludicrous yeah. process uh the uh, house of commons will say Thank you, lords and ladies, but go away. This is deliberate prevarication, obfuscation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just disgusting, frankly. It's preposterous. It's, and, it, uh, yeah, it's a real I'm, crisis just, out it's there. Not, our, our democracy right now is just not fit for purpose, is I, it? I agree Ridiculous. with you. There's a real crisis out there, and this lot are treating it like a debating society fun topic. So uh, now, uh, let's move on. Uh, HMRC, the tax man runneth. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, we reported yesterday this extraordinary, disgraceful decision Ridiculous. to close down the customer helpline. You've got problems <laughs> with your taxes. Summer. As of like today, for six months, so April that 100 September. customer service staff could work three days a week uh, and work from home. Uh, so they closed the whole line. Now, among others, you just said this is preposterous, was the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, and uh, he made his feelings clone. Uh, clear. Uh, lots of other people did. Pensioners in particular, they need yeah. this help. Like, also, and guess what? Guess what? Well, HMRC have caved in and that good. helpline will stay in position. There is, Hooray! There a is, victory for common sense. There is some sort of feckless rot setting in with the civil service where none of them want to turn up for work. None of them want to actually do their jobs. They want to sit at home with confidential material. They're the ones supposed to be running this country. They want more money to do less. We pay for them. And I've had enough of this. At one point, we had Jake Jacob Rees Mogg in the sort of Brexit efficiencies and get back to work department, mm -hmm. demon headmaster going around yeah, yeah. putting post it notes on computers, whole departments in Whitehall without a single person sitting at a desk. Yeah. Well, can't you just turn around and say, law is, if you're a civil servant, you turn up for work or you're not getting your pension? Can't you do that? Yeah. I mean, what are you? Is this government out of control of absolutely everything that the tail now wags the dog in the civil the service? They've lost the grip. So uh, much so that they can actually almost well, get away with saying, "Oh, just close the tax check help this line." Out. HMRC. What is this country? The, ta the tax uh, HMRC chief executive Jim Harris said, "We've listened to the feedback and uh, we're halting." 
the helpline changes as we recognise more needs to be done to ensure all taxpayers' needs are met, whilst also encouraging them to transition to online services. So, Jim, so, Jim, why did you make that ridiculous, pathetic decision in the first yes. place to close down your customer helpline? Why did you make that decision also, in the first place? Have and ever... why have you changed your mind? Are you fit for purpose in your job? Ever I would been on not. HMRC online through the government gateway to doom? It's yeah. not exactly a simple system, my friends. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, not many of the train drivers will see this message because they're always on strike. But if you go to, or the other day, if oh, you this went to King's... really annoyed me. I know it will. Uh, King's Cross Station, uh, there was a big Ramadan message uh, because Ramadan was beginning, big Islamic message. Uh, they said, uh, and so a lot of customers complained and said, what's doing, have we got Easter coming up, that sort of thing? How about a Christian? It's Lent. So they, Why not Lent? Lent. They said, uh, oh, we do, we do other religions' messages no, as don't. well. No, they don't. They suddenly put this Muslim Islamic message up. Uh, yeah. Now they've had to pull it down, apologise, and say, and it, they've launched an investigation into how this got there. It disgusts me. I'm fed up of this bullying and having, you know, Islam forced down my throat when this is a Christian country. It always has been. You want to be a Muslim? Go ahead. You want to be a Hindu? Go ahead. You want to be a Buddhist, a Sikh, a Jedi? Go ahead. Atheist? Practice your religion. Atheist? An atheist, a polytheist, a pantheist. I don't care. Do what you like. Practice your religion privately. That's freedom. We're a liberal society. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in, but this is a Christian country. It's been a Christian country for 2,000 years and we're staying a Christian country. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's our heritage. That's our legacy. That's what underpins our culture. And I'm fed up of that being constantly kicked around, diluted and eroded when it's given so much so much to the Western world and told, oh, no, sorry, you play second fiddle. Oh, you want to play a gospel song on a keyboard on Oxford Street? You're going to get arrested. Oh, but I know. <laughs> Let's put facts from the Quran all over the blimmin' stations. What's going on? I thought you might get a bit worked up about that one, and you certainly did, but I agree with you. I mean, what, what about a Christian message? Don't lie and say, oh, we put messages from all religions. When was the last Don't time you put any a message Sikh religions message in a train station? Or a Hindu message? You haven't, have you? It's yeah. just Islam, and uh, nothing Always. against Islam, but why are they getting preferential treatment? And frankly, just put the train times up on the notice board. We don't need religious messages. Thank you very much. Just, so, the, so the message said, of yeah. all the sons of Adam's are sinners, but the best of the sinners are those who repent often. I mean, it's just... Yeah, well, I'm a sinner, so what the hell. I rather enjoy being a sinner, so... Uh, repent, I, 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 I certainly don't <laughs> repent. I reject that message. Uh, now, uh, let's move on. Uh, woke uh, NHS bosses are sending senior staff on £4,000 courses. They're about three or four days, 4000 each, uh, to learn all about equality, diversity and inclusion. Uh, this e these are courses run by the very weird organisation called the NHS Confederation. And this is a sort of, it's, it's an independent organisation that acts like it's a part of the NHS, but it isn't. And what it is, is like a weird cheerleader for our amazing health service, which of course isn't amazing, it's rubbish. Uh, uh, they, get, they raise money, uh, they take uh, do donors uh, oh, come on in, and so on and so forth. So they are now taking money from their uh, spiritual leader, the NHS, to teach uh, highly paid uh, NHS executives all about uh, equality, diversity oh, just, and inclusion. What a waste equality, of money. It's not diversity, it's not inclusion, it's exclusion, it's inequality. This is the problem with all of this. I mean, Kemi Badenoch, the business secretary, has come out and said the majority of EDI spending is a waste of money. No, it's not just a waste of money, it is toxic. It deliberately creates divisions, it gets rid of meritocracy, it deliberately punishes and excludes white men because, oh, I don't know, they haven't propped up the country and the economy for the last 2,000 years, forget them. And this, it's just unhealthy, it's toxic, it is a cancer in society, it should be all banned. Exactly. You can tell I didn't have much sleep last <laughs> yeah, night, Yeah, you didn't, you? did you? Blimey, oh. Come on, you're on fire. I don't even need to be here. Uh, I'm taking tomorrow morning off. Uh, right, uh, <laughs> Director General of the BBC, Tim Davey, uh, went before the uh, Culture, Media and Sport Committee in Parliament yesterday, uh, and uh, he actually had the temerity to say that the BBC was doing a fantastic job uh, reporting impartially... Oh, and, yeah, aren't you? Uh, ..in an unbiased way, uh, whilst uh, conceding that uh, two of their Middle Eastern journalists should not have liked 
pro-Hamas tweets, uh, whilst conceding that two days ago the state broadcaster had to apologise to Reform UK for calling them far right. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying they're doing a good job, but they're oh, not. They're doing, they're doing a terrible job. job. But let's have a listen to uh, Tim's uh, crock of something uh, at uh, Parliament uh, yesterday. Um, overall, we're doing a good job in terms of delivering uh, impartial coverage amidst enormous pressure. One of the things I talk a lot about is 70% of the world now does not have a free press. The polarisation in society is profound. So any institution like ourselves to steer the course amongst the noise, the storms of social media is very demanding. I mean, hold on, if you want to steer the course through the storms of social media, perhaps tell Gary Lineker to shut down <laughs> exactly. his Twitter account before you pay him the next five grazillion pounds. I mean, this is utterly ridiculous. You can't just turn around and say, we're really impartial, we're doing really well at being impartial, and then that becomes the truth. It is not. And, you know, they keep talking about, oh, you know, it's going to polarise society and we're doing really well at getting through the middle of all of that. Everybody remembers your reportage of Brexit. Everybody remembers you told us the sky was going to fall in. Everybody remembers that you, you said that everyone's going to go bankrupt. You took that information from every single person who wanted yeah, to stay in the EU, yeah, didn't bring yeah. anything to those who want to leave. He's you know a what? victim. None of it happened. Tim Davey is a victim of the BBC group think that imprisons them all. They cannot see, they cannot see that see. they are biased and prejudiced. And they really, really are. We do not get unbiased or impartial reporting from the BBC. We get the view from the far left. There you go, far left. Far left, exactly. Uh, far, now, uh, <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about uh, uh, the BAFTA Awards. BAFTA TV Awards, uh, it doesn't really matter what, who got awarded. Uh, uh, Happy Valley did very well. That was an excellent series. Black Mirror and so on. But, what people, like Mirror, but what people cannot work out, and I agree, why did the rubbish crown get eight nominations, eight nominations. It's rubbish. It's uh, far-fetched nonsense, uh, not particularly well-directed, not particularly well-acted. Why has it got eight nominations? Oh, it's beyond me. You know me, I barely watch TV. I can't be bothered with any of it. I have watched a bit of The Crown and I just find it pretty it's, tedious. It's but it started boring. to get weird, didn't it, with, like, ghosts coming back of Princess Di and things like that. It just started right. to get a bit off. Let's uh, quickly uh, finish off. Good, Let's f quickly finish off <laughs> yep. on the uh, phenomenon of football statues. Harry Kane's yep. statue has been oh, kept in storage statue. for years. Now we know why. I think we can have a look at it. <laughs> and we're going to have a look at a few other. That's Harry Kane. What is that? Uh, he looks like that yeah. Rolo man. We've got some others, I think. Mm. Uh, who else have we got? That's Harry Kane. It doesn't look remotely like him. Uh, we've got, uh, I think... Uh, who is that? Is that that's Beckham, isn't it? Is no, that's Beckham? the Ronaldo one. Or it's either Ronaldo or it's the oh, head from Arsenal. Who is that one? Ronaldo. That's Ronaldo, isn't oh, it? Oh, Ronaldo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any more? Looks like the head from Arsenal. Maradona. Maradona. Let's have a look at Maradona. That's quite ghoulish. That's Harry. Oh, we're not getting Maradona. Morning, have we got Mo Salah? There's Maradona. What is that? Quickly, Mo, Mo Salah. Quickly, I love Mo Salah. There he is. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> and on that Mo Salah bombshell. Oh, my God. Why are football statues always such rubbish? It's Sadly, bad. Alex, we've come to the end of this show. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please do join us a bit later for our show. Cross oh. Talk coming up at 1pm. Julia Hartley Brewer next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. 
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! <laughs> it's carry on. What just happened? <laughs> Ooh, uh, <missing. laughs> there was a suggestion.